So obviously I'm intrigued because they have all these big artists up there, but $20 a month sounds like a lot of money. Do we know, first of all, what this means for their pre-existing contracts? Am I no longer going to be able to listen to Jay-Z on Spotify and only on Tidal? Uh, no, that, that's not really the plan. I mean, if anything, it speaks to the trend of windowing, which is, you know, giving an exclusive to a different service like an iTunes or a Spotify or even a Pandora going forward. So, so when T-Swift has a new record, it goes out on Tidal first, but you can still buy it eventually on iTunes. Maybe I mean that's that's a hypothetical. Taylor doesn't have a you know equity partnership the way that the sixteen artists that were announced yesterday do, but that that is that's an example of what. Oh, I see. So if Beyonce does that, Beyonce could, yes. or the guy with the mouse hat. But you yeah. can stream it on Tidal. You might not and buy it on iTunes, but you might not be able to stream it on Spotify. Potentially. So, for example, Rihanna released a new single last week. She's one of the partners of Tidal. You can't stream it on Spotify, but you can stream it exclusively on Tidal. You can also buy it on iTunes. So it's also yeah. going to be uh, a, a race for behaviors. Like, do people want to continue downloading? Do they want to stream it? You can also, of course, stream it offline. So you could add it to a playlist and take it with you wherever you go. So Matt mentioned Taylor Swift. She was conspicuously absent among the stars on the stage there. Everybody from Usher to Madonna to Nicki Minaj, Rihanna. Uh, truly an incredible lineup. There are stories this morning about how Johnny I Johnny Iovine? Jimmy Johnny Iovine, Jimmy Iovine, and uh, excuse me, Jim, Sorry, Jimmy Jim, Iovine. Jimmy Iovine and Johnny Ives are two separate yes. people, right? Correct. But, but both Apple executives. they're both connected to Apple, that's and right. And they're rolling out a streaming radio service through iTunes with Beats. Mm -hmm. Is Tidal a big threat to that? Uh, I think that, well, Jay said himself when we spoke to him on Friday that, uh, you know, there's already a little behind the scenes uh, bidding war with, with artists uh, that he was talking to that Jimmy's also talking to for this forthcoming relaunch. So, yeah, I think they are going to compete with each other. The idea is that the relaunch of Beats is also going to be a premium only, subscription only service, probably closer to the 9.99 tier that um, Title also offers in addition to the 1999 high definition. But tier. Beats isn't going to give its artists equity in the platform. That remains to be seen. But this is, by the way, you bring up price. This is an important aspect of this. The the, the HD version, which otherwise you're kind of going a little bit ghetto, is twenty dollars a month. That's mm -hmm. a lot more than Spotify costs. Um, is it really that much higher quality? I mean, it's a it's a lossless CD quality audio without having to play a physical CD. I mean, Sonos, uh, which is a premium speaker, they do a lot of partnerships with these services. So, for the audio file, for the you know audio enthusiast, if you will, it's probably a better deal and. Tidal also has more video content than some of these other services. Uh, for example, Daft Punk made a short film that was really popular 10 years ago that can only be streamed on Tidal. So cool. the more exclusives that you get from this service, the, the better the value proposition, but it's still very much a moving target. All right, so it definitely sounds like a lot changing in this world. It's, it's evolving, uh, but rather quickly.